that was paid for the ransom of our sin, Father, that, that we could have a home in heaven, our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Father, we come into your house tonight, Father, looking for a word from you, humbly seeking your face, that we pray that you would speak to our hearts and touch our hearts and change, uh, change our lives for to draw us closer to you, conform us more and more to your image. Father, help us to be a blessing here at Temple Baptist Church. And we ask that you bless the services tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Psalm 507, if you would. Psalm 507, come thou fount. We'll sing this together. Psalm 507.
Uh, Lord willing, our buses will be running again next week. Uh, the choir will be singing again next week. We've got everything ready to go. We're planned and uh, looking forward to getting everything back in the full swing next week, May 31st. So we encourage you, uh, if you have a Sunday school that you're already a part of, a class, please be there by 10 a.m. next week. And if you don't have a Sunday school that you regularly attend, uh, we have plenty. Uh, we have one, I'm sure, that will meet your age group and will be uh, be a great place for you to, to sit in and learn under. So we encourage you to be a part of the Sunday School program as we start up again next week at 10 a.m. Uh, choir practice resumed this evening at uh, 5 p.m. and it will continue uh, every Sunday like usual, trying to get back into the normal routine again. Uh, but at 5 p.m. every Sunday and next Sunday will be our first choir special. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, after the service this evening, we have a pizza blast uh, in celebration of Mrs. Crane's birthday, which was yesterday. Uh, so we, the, the church will be providing the pizza, uh, but hopefully uh, there are plenty of desserts over there already. I'm sure there were some brought in, I know, already, and uh, hopefully as more people filter in, they'll bring in some more desserts. But we're looking forward to a, a time of some food and fellowship and celebration of Mrs. Crane uh, following the evening service here tonight. Uh, homecoming uh, is June 7th. Two weeks from today, June the 7th, will be homecoming. Uh, and uh, um, unlike what we have normally done in the past, there will be no potluck uh, after a homecoming service, but there will be um, the, uh, lose my words here, uh, the picnic lunch. There it is, the picnic lunch following the church service at the Crane's house. And so that will be uh, taking place. We'll have, if you bring your own picnic lunch, we'll all meet together at the Crane's house after church. Uh, enjoy a time of fellowship there. Uh, in Jubilee, we'll continue Monday and Tuesday, June 8th and 9th at 7 p.m. Uh, I was told tonight that not only do we have Brother Mark Holmes and Brother Noah Fry going to be with us preaching, but we have one extra special guest uh, preacher who will be with us, Brother Johnny Crane, will also be with us preaching uh, for Jubilee and Homecoming, so we're looking forward to having him back with us. Uh, and so we'll have the Lone Star Baptist College Tour Group with us as well, providing special music in the evenings. Uh, so we're looking forward to a great time. Uh, be in prayer for Jubilee as it, as it approaches. Uh, be in prayer for all the preparation and uh, that everything would go smoothly. And in, in regards to preparation, we have a men's work day uh, and a prayer breakfast this coming Saturday, May the 30th. That will be at 8.15 a.m. Uh, don't come at 8.15 p.m. We're all going to be asleep. Uh, but 8.15 a.m. will be here for uh, the prayer breakfast and to start with, and then we'll uh, follow that up with a work day to try to get the grounds prepared and ready to go. Uh, so that will be this coming Saturday at 8.15 a.m. Uh, and one more announcement is that this Wednesday, uh, we're going to be starting a, uh, a kids program for, for children during the church service. Well, uh, instead of Master's Club, because we lost a couple months worth of Master's Club when everything shut down. Uh, so to try to make up for that, we're not going to do necessarily Master's Club, uh, but we will have a program for the kids. Uh, on Wednesday evenings, and with that, we're also going to be introducing and starting uh, our kids' choir. And so if you have children, we'd love them to be a part of it. Uh, and if you know of children who are not here this evening, uh, please just give them the invitation. We encourage them to be a part of it. The more we have, the better. Uh, and we're looking forward to starting that this evening, or not this evening, this Wednesday evening uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, and last announcement, again, just a reminder, our offering will be taken uh, after the service. The offering place will be in the back in the lobbies. Uh, and so you can drop off your tithes and offerings with one of the ushers in the back following the service.
and Sister Mary, we appreciate that. Turn with me, if you will, to uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. We'll be reading verses 1 through 12. 1 uh, Peter chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. When you find that passage, please stand with me in reference to the Word of God. 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning in verse 1, the Bible says, The elders which are among you by exhort, who am also, or who am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. When the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be diligent, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Sylvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I, as I suppose, I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God, wherein ye stand. Let us pray. Father God, heaven is good to be back in your house once again this evening to worship you, the true and mighty God. Father, we ask your blessings on those who gathered in attendance tonight. Lord, those who set a blessings for those who set aside some time to worship you. Father, we thank, we're so thankful for our body of Christ here. We're thankful for our church. Lord, we ask you to be with those who are unable to meet with us this evening. Father, may you encourage them and comfort them and uh, Father, meet whatever need they may have this evening. Lord, uh, we just rejoice in knowing that uh, our Father God is on his throne in heaven, that your Son, Jesus Christ, sits at your right hand as an intercessor for us, Lord. We're so thankful for that. We're thankful for this great salvation that you made available to us. And Father, we look forward to the day that uh, we meet you in heaven. Lord, we just praise you. Ask your blessings on Pastor Frank tonight as he preaches the Word of God. Father, may it encourage each and every one of your children here tonight. And Lord, we give you all honor and praise and glory. We ask these things in the name and through the precious blood of our Savior, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Just read. 
Brother Beverly right here. <laughs> Simple Baptist. God's amen. good. Amen. Have you ever noticed that the Christian singers that are filled with the Spirit of God, it just seems like they're just so much better than the world singers. Amen. I mean, it just seems like that God fills all the gaps. You can hear all the, uh, you know, uh, the voices cracking and different things, and unless they fill it, uh, you know, how they do with the mixer board. But here, I'm telling you, that was just straight. It was live. It was just perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, if there is one tonight that has a wounded heart, okay, did you read that verse tonight? This is not the message, but I've got to bring the verse out. Casting all your care upon him, verse 7 of chapter 5 of the book of 1 Peter, for he careth for you. Amen. Uh, I mean, you know, you just have to know that God is in heaven. He, he cares for you. You can cast all your care upon him. That's right. The Old Testament said, pour your heart out unto the Lord. And until you get all that old ugly stuff out of there, I mean, you just got to let that crusty, moldy stuff that's down there. You ever go into a house and there's black mold and stuff in there and you have to have a respirator? Brother Terry, you're in the real estate business. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. And uh, you wonder, man, can anybody ever live in this place again? I talk to contractors and they say, yep. You got to dry out that source of water wherever it is, and uh, it's feeding on something in this house. There's paper, there's wood, it's feeding. You shut down the water supply, you can kill it, and it takes time. But you know what? God can heal, heal that broken heart tonight. Right. Uh, just don't think. Listen, a lot of people give it up. Are you listening? This may be the message tonight. Uh, during the pandemic, during the quarantine, during the isolation, there's a lot of people. Look around. There's a lot of people. They're fearful. Oh, yeah. They're worried. They're concerned. That's right. And uh, let's do what the verse said. Cast all of our care on the Lord. Amen. He cares for us. <laughs> I think I'll shout all the way home tonight. He cares for our souls. And he loves us. We're his children. Yeah. I talked to my son this afternoon. I tell you, it made a difference in the way I felt. You know, when God's children talk to Him, the Heavenly Father, don't you know when the relations are good between us and Him, business picks up. That's right. Souls get saved. Amen. I mean, we pray and we pray and we pray for people to get saved. And God's church started being again. People started getting saved. Isn't that wonderful? I want to speak from verse number 5, a text verse tonight, 1 Peter 5, verse 5. Notice it says that, that we should be clothed with humility. Now, if you think you have it, you don't. <laughs> Amen. That's right. You don't get a corner on the market of this subject we're talking about tonight. I mean, you're in constant battle, constantly tweaking your life to meet that expectation of being clothed with it. Remember what I said this morning, how you have to be baptized in the Word to be clean? Here, you have to just be completely enveloped with this humility, with this meekness. Blessed are, uh, over there in chapter 5 of the book of Matthew, let's turn over there. I, I love the Beatitudes, don't you? Amen. And I love hearing the Sermon on the Mount of our Savior. Uh, it's a great, now listen, this isn't how you get to heaven. A lot of people look at this uh, chapter, and they think if they're meek, and if they're, uh, you know, have a, a, a spirit of, Meekness and they're a poor in spirit, and, and you know uh, if, if they're a, uh, if they have a pure heart, they'll get to heaven. Well, I got news for you: you'll never have it on your own. You have to have a savior, amen, to give you these qualities and these attributes. But look at verse number five of chapter five: "Blessed are the meek." Here it is. Here's this. Uh, this is this clothed in humility. Uh, what we're te teaching about tonight: for they shall inherit. The earth. So there's a reward. I think we saw the reward mentioned uh, over here in First Peter. He said that when the chief shepherd shall appear, those who are clothed in humility shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Now please keep in mind that meekness is not weakness. It is not Jesus Christ was meek and lowly of heart. 
But that didn't mean. Now look, he was raised in the carpenter shop. He was much of a man. I mean, he had to work hard. He was a hard worker. Moses, the meekest man, the scripture said, he was clothed in this humility. He had two million in his congregation. Can you imagine being a pastor of all those problems? Huh. And then Jethro, his father-in-law, out there in the, uh, in the desert, backside of the desert, he told Moses, he said, look, in essence, in our everyday vernacular, he said, you're going to go nuts. You need to have captains of 50s and captains of 100s. You need to organize this thing. All these people can't come and tell you all their worries and their woes. He said, you'll, you'll, you'll uh, dissolve away. You're, you, you'll you'll uh, drizzle out. There's no way that you can possibly take all the problems upon yourself. Okay? But in the meantime, may I say, I think I know the answer and the recipe for humility. Okay? Moses had it because... The experience Moses had out there on the back 40, all right? I'm talking about the back side of the desert. He had so many problems that he had to turn to the Lord. He did not have the answers to all those people's problems. So he asked the Lord. And God gave him great grace. That's the answer to it, folks. Amen. Now look, when folks come and counsel with me, uh, I may or may not have the answer. They probably don't. But I do know this, God has it. That's right. If I can just get in touch with God, I sit up here on stage tonight and I said, Lord, things just got a little lighter. <laughs> After hearing those good songs and uh, upbeat spirit here in the church today, I don't know what people did without the Lord. Amen. That's I don't know what people do without the church. That's right. I don't know how they think they can make it without it. I can't do it. No. I, I remember how hard it was for me. Did y'all watch these that we put on at the house? on the Sunday evenings, and then the Wednesday nights. And, uh, you know, it was like, uh, it was like beating my head up against a wall. Because, you know, Miss Crane got it. She got full blasts, I'm talking about. She got the whole message all to her. She got it. She was my amen corner. She was my deacon throat. She was everything. She was a deaconess. Sis. Uh, whatever, that's not in the Bible. But anyway, uh, uh, long and the short of it, uh, you know, so I, I really think we ought to try our best to listen to what God says about this humble, does he not love a humble and contrite spirit? Amen. And he says that he resisted the proud. He, he giveth grace. He gives grace to the humble. Now, you can tell a person if they have that grace or not because, you know what, they don't need a position. They don't need a title. They don't have to have everything their way. Uh, look, uh, if I ask to do something, uh, if it's for the Lord, they're 100% for it. That's right. Amen. And, and so beggars can't be choosers. We just have to say, you know what, Lord, your will be done. And this is where it really, I mean, it's kind of sticky here because our will and God's will is totally entirely different. And, and, you know, we have our mindset and we have our thoughts and suggestions and, and we try to plead with the Lord and say, Lord, do better this way. I think it would be good to do this and this time and place. And, and we, uh, we thought we'd, we'd uh, you know, fare much better, Lord, if we could just, uh, you know, be free from all of ours. That's been all of our prayers. Don't get me wrong. You know that's true. Can I tell you, in the most excruciating and painful ordeals of our life, we look back on it retro, and suddenly we think, you know what? We learned some great, great truths during those times. We had to really dig down deep and do some soul searching. Oh, my soul, my soul. I tell you what, God's at work. I, he, he, listen, he is, he's at work tonight. He don't go to sleep. He is working for us. He loves us. Tonight I want to lay out for you in this chapter, 1 uh, Peter chapter 5, when it mentions the very first two words, the elders. Okay? I want you to know who these people are because this word is interchangeable in the scripture for those of you who study the word of God. These are pastors. The same word, bishop, the same word overseer, the same word uh, pastors or uh, elders are all interchangeable here. And Peter said, in which I am also one, 
Someone tell me here tonight, this is Bible study night. Who can tell me, and where was it that Peter was the pastor? Does anybody know that answer? Well, we learned at the end of the chapter he was over there in Babylon, but where did he, where, where, where was it that God really used Peter? In Jerusalem. He was the pastor of the first church. And, and, and scholars say that there was over 100,000 people in that first church. And, you know, just like Moses, if you have that many people, if you have that many problems, you better get along with God. Yeah, that's right. You better have a walk with God. And all of that, all of these different uh, things coming his way all at once, you know what it brings? It develops the kind of person uh, that God wants uh, this pastor to be, to be a humble man of God. Listen, you cannot browbeat people. I would like to have more people, but if I have to browbeat people, and if I have to force people, and if I have to twist arms, if I have to put people in straitjackets uh, to get them to come to the house of God, friend, it's not right. Okay. We have to be patient. That's where this experience uh, uh, brings patience, tribulation, brings patience. I can also say that all of these tribulations brings, uh, it brings God's touch of humility uh, on an individual. Amen. I asked Brother Deacon, he was here when I came here, 23 years ago in June. I said, Brother Deacon, I said, I said, was I a little bit brash when I first came off the mission field so ready to preach? He said, Father, he said, Pastor, not Father. He said, Pastor, <laughs> he said, you were burning up. <laughs> he said, you had some boldness on you. And I was locked up behind the, the iron curtain, you have to understand. And so when God led me to this great uh, church here at Temple Baptist, uh, my heart was burning and yearning to be your pastor, to feed. Amen. Notice it says, verse 2, to feed the flock of God. And so God has a way uh, of organization that we do not have. And God has a duties to perform of the pastors. Now, keep in mind, work with people. There's people problems. Okay? I'm talking about we, we're dealing with those people in their physical, mental, and physical, physiological uh, problems. And we mainly use the word of God. We don't have a pill to give them. We don't have a prescription to give them. But we just have to make ourselves available to God. That's right. We have to be a minister of God. We have to stand in the gap and make up the head. The saddest verse in all the Bible, Ezekiel 22, verse number 30, when it says, I'm looking for a man to stand in the gap and make up the head. Then it goes on to say, I found none. I found none to make a difference. So, Looking for one person to make a difference. I, I pray that if no one else, listen, I pray that God would use me. Would you pray for me that I can make a difference uh, in this community? I'm not talking about after five years or 10 years or uh, 15 or 20. I'm talking about 20, 25, 30, 35. Can you imagine Bobby Robertson 63 years at one church? It's got to be a record. You can ask anybody uh, in the Piedmont, North Carolina, uh, Virginia. Uh, they all know him over there. You know what? He just decided. He just decided he was going to stay. He just decided. The battle's already won. It's the Lord's. He's our defense. And he had his set of problems. He had a massive heart attack when he first went there because like Moses, he didn't have any helpers. He was doing it all himself. He was self-taught. He went to typing school at night. He even typed the bulletin. Think on that. And running about 800 people all by himself. He was driving himself crazy. Like I told you, Jethro told Moses he was going to drive himself crazy. You see, we've got to delegate this authority. God gives it to us, but he expects us not. Look, we all can't do everything. I mean, one person can't do everything. So we have to, we have to uh, you know, share the responsibilities. And he said, for us who are preachers, we need to feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight they're up, and that's where the overseer word comes in. And it's not by constraint, but willingly. Not for money or filthy lucre, but for and of a ready mind. I want you to see that the, the pastor is not 
a natural born leader. This is how you know of the Lord or not. You're not born with this. This comes from God. Amen. And an elder, a leader, he's not natural uh, in his leadership. No one's born with any of these traits. But you know what? I learned that song when I was a boy. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. Amen. All I have to do is follow. <laughs> Amen. And so we understand that living in the desert, living all along, Moses learned some things out there tending to goats. Hmm. Hard, you ever been around a goat? Are they hard headed? <laughs> They'll step back. Here's a couple of boys right here. They know all about goat tending. This fellow, am I right about that? A goat will back up a couple of steps and then charge you full blast, won't they? Yeah. Okay. If they have horns, you look out for that. <laughs> And uh, I think one of my grandchildren said that they, uh, Paul, I think it'd be good if we got one of them goats. They make good pets. You're asking for trouble. I never forget, uh, my wife and Dan, I'm going to tell off on now. They said, I think it'd be good for us to have some pigs out here on the farm. They asked me my opinion. I said, well, you at least saw me. <laughs> they loved them when they was piglets. <laughs> they love them. They're so cute, little curly tail. And the kids would jump over there and play with them. So cute. They're so cute. You can just have them inside. <laughs> them rascals got huge. <laughs> and nasty. <laughs> and now we know why God don't want us to eat it. <laughs> filthy. You only do how filthy you never eat another baker's strip in your life. Like that. Filthy than the rascals. Anyway. We'll go on another subject. I've heard some of you tonight. You need bake bacon for supper this morning, <laughs> breakfast this morning. Wait, I'm just telling you, God can take you and God can teach you something in an isolation like Moses out there, tending to goats that you would never ever learn anywhere else. Uh, that's right. Never. So can't all join when you fall into divers' testimonies. The first thing I see tonight is that we need to take the leadership, their example. We need to listen to those who are our spiritual, our God-given leaders, our elders. Look at verse number five again. Uh, notice it says, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves. Okay? He's speaking to people in faith. Those who are younger in faith now. Uh, you, you just submit yourself um, to this God-given authority, to your elder. Because we're subject uh, to these who God placed over us. There's accountability. Uh, it's not loosey-goosey. It's not what we want to do. It's not, uh, you know, uh, I think I'll do it this way or that way. Why don't we check in to see what God has to say. I I'm, not, I'm not putting flowers on me now. But I am the pastor. Hello. That's right. Amen. Check in with me. Pray with me. you got to make a decision to make. Let's pray together. Let's talk about it. Let's see if God's in it. I'm not want veto power in my life. I know some preacher, uh, they ask their membership uh, to have veto power. I don't want any of that. That's your private life. That's your personal life. But can we at least pray? That went over. <laughs> so Peter said he was a pastor. And once he pastored this church in Jerusalem, now there's thousands of people now. I believe that God taught him some humbleness here and some humility that he would not have any other way. And you know what? He, he gained this uh, this wisdom. Of course, humility is part of being wise. He, he learned it through being an approachable pastor. And, you know, you have some problems. You have day-to-day uh, -day problems. Uh, and and uh, I just want you to know I'm available. Amen. I just want you to know that you can come to me. There, there's some of you that call me every week. Others haven't called me the whole time I've been here. That's good. Some, you know, need me more than others. But, hey, I just want you to know whether, you know, whether you use my pastor uh, calling or not, uh, that's between you and the Lord. But I am here for you. And uh, uh, Peter, Peter, no doubt, had to make himself uh, available. He also, he said, 
plural, elders. There were many who served with him, as they do here in our church, that uh, in case the pastor's out of town, in case he's sick, in case uh, uh, for whatever reason he's not available, there's someone there for you. I've had to call him Brother Walter so many times. Funerals, I'm out of, uh, overseas or what have you. It seems like every time I go overseas, uh, somebody dies. And uh, what do you do? Uh, but you know what? It's got to go on. The church has got to go on. Uh, we've got uh, a ministry uh, here. Uh, we've got a service uh, to be rendered. And, and we understand that, listen, uh, God said, he said, you cannot be as a Lord that is de de demanding and lording over God's heritage. But it says here that you are an example. In other words, I could never ask you to do something that I'm not already involved with. Because it's, i got to put myself in your position. What if I got this guy up here and he's pounding the pulpit and he's breathing fire and he's asking me to do something spiritually and he's he's encouraging me to be a soul winner? Let's just use that as an example. He don't do it himself. I can't respect a guy like that. I, I want my pastor to be a soul winner. Amen. I want my pastor to be. Out front. Amen. Amen. I don't look, I don't want anybody here in this church to out get out. Well, really got quiet here. Amen. Oh, true. I want to be an example. Amen. 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 I really get a word. If, if a week goes by and someone's not walked these aisles to trust Jesus Christ as their Savior, I go to bed with a burden. You know why? Because God doesn't just have this church up here sitting and propped up here to look for him. He has us up here to perform the ministry and reaching people and ministering to their needs of their life. It's so important that we understand that this all comes down through God-given leadership. And look, it says there's a, a, a shepherd, but there's also the chief shepherd. He's the one that's in charge, right? Amen. We're taking orders from him. Right. He gives it to us. We delegate that authority. And, uh, you know, it does say that we're all subject to one another. In other words, there's not one big eye person that's in charge. And, and I'm the boss or I'm the CEO. And, and some ministries think that, that the pastor's role is a CEO. Friend, this is not a business. This is a ministry. Yeah, that's right, right. So we do have to be subject to one another. We do have to ask questions. We do not have to pray for one another. We, we, we have to understand there's that other people has needs and feelings besides one or two of us. You understand what I'm saying? And so we have to submit ourselves one to another. Now, let, me, let me give you an example, illustration before we move to the next point. It's my opinion, and evidently it's also your opinion, that it's time for the church to open up. It's time for America to open back up. Right, My daughter told me there's over 200 restaurants in the city where she lives in Albuquerque that are going to go belly up because of this prolonging and opening our economy. And you know, I just thought 200, just 200 restaurants. Can you imagine all the others? This is a big crush. We don't understand the far reaching effects of all this going on in our country. But we understand if God says, pull the trigger, Pastor, it's time to open the door. Let those come who want to come. Those that don't want to come, don't make them come. Just open the door. Amen. Thank you for standing behind us. You understand why I'm saying the chain of command? You understand Brother Mark here in the military, have been retired military. He understands the chain. Somebody's getting an order. Somebody's following an order. God says to open up the church of the Lord Jesus. He said the gates of hell won't prevail. We've got the promise of protection right there. Right. I don't think we'll be foolish. I think we're scattered out of here. We're, we're, we're distancing ourselves, social distancing. Everybody's wearing big uh, crosses around their necks. You know what I'm saying? Stay away. <laughs> Donna, she's got more humor than all the people in this church. <laughs> But we do have to submit ourselves. We do, folks. I'm not very submissive. You don't have much. Exactly. You think you 
you think that you could just you could just run your life and run everybody else's life. No, you're not running my life. That's right. I'm following the Lord. Yeah. I'm not doing what you tell me to do. We have to follow the Lord. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. There's an act of humility. A proud person can't follow another person. That's right. He hadn't got it in. And guess what? God resists that person. That person's going to have to stumble and fall, get up, stumble and fall, and get up, and stumble and fall, and get up, and stumble and fall by the fall. Yeah. He'll have a lot of bruises, a lot of things before he finally gets the message and pray that he does before he hits that wall. Amen? And thank God there is a crown given to the faithful pastors. And don't forget that, verse 4, for those of you who are seeking to be a pastor. Don't forget pastor's duties now. Hold on just a minute. If you're thinking about pastoring out here, and those that are listening, how do you do with the hospitals? If you can't go to a hospital, you're not a pastor. How do you do at funerals? You go now, you won't make it as a pastor. How do you do door to door, cold turkey calling on people? Not doing it now, you won't make a pastor. I'm just trying to help you. How about visitors? You, you like to go see visitors that's come to the church and fill out a visitor's card? If you're not a people person, get out of the ministry. Yeah. I'm serious. Go sell cars or insurance or something. Right. Then you'll learn how to get in the people business in because business is all about people. Am I right, Brother Terry? Amen. Same way in the ministry. If you are not serving people, you are not in the ministry. Yeah. That sounds two plus two is four, right? People don't understand that. It's not just about drawing a check. Hey, how about this? Just throw a couple more out. How about those that have recently gotten baptized? Do you like to go and make follow-up calls and discipleships? If you're not doing it now, don't expect yourself to automatically want to do it when you get some kind of big title or position. You're not a pastor. That's right. A pastor is clothed in humility, and whatever God says that you need to do today, and, and look, you go by the seat of your britches. You don't know what's coming at you. You don't have a plan usually. I mean, you try to make a plan as best you can, but you don't know exactly because there's different things. Ahead. It's hitting all at the same time. There's people dying. There's people there. For that. How about this? New members or even newcomers to the area. We get this list every month. Would you believe Gulfport is getting popular? Have y'all noticed the traffic is picking up? Brother Chris, what would you say? Maybe 200 people a month moving to Gulfport. Four or five hundred people moving to Gulfport every month. Yep. I don't know if it's the weather. I don't know if they're promoting it. I don't know if it's advertised. I don't know where it's spice most of the year. I don't know. I know one thing. If we have that many moving to Gulfport and we ain't out on them, we're at the door the first week they move in. I'm just saying it. You better think long and hard before you go in the ministry if you're out here. I'm, I'm talking about elders. We're in the text tonight. It's all about the pastor. If you have this idea in the back of your mind, the glory of the pastor, there is none. That's when we get to heaven, right? That is if we serve well. That's right. If we don't care for all these needs of these people, friend, we're fooling ourselves. There is much work to do. Would you pray for me that I will be clothed in this humility? Amen. That I won't expect things. Listen, now, Dr. Adams gave us this analogy uh, in the Bible College. He said this, and I love this. This is, this is something unique because it, it's, it's just homespun uh, theology, and I love it. He says if you don't get a whole loaf, you know the rest of the story, right? Be happy with a couple slices that you get it. In other words, you're not going to get everything that you want. That's in life, isn't it? Amen. Praise the Lord. Second thing is, not only do we need to submit to the authority, listen to this, we need to submit to each other. According to verse number five, it says submit uh, yourselves, uh, not only to the elder, but to one another, uh, if you look and see uh, there uh, a little bit further on. Now, this is where the humility comes in for the preachers. We have to listen. If you have a preacher or a teacher or whatever is a leader in the church and you go to them with a problem and all they want to do is talk, you didn't go to them for them to talk to you. 
You go to them so that you can listen to what they're saying. In other words, you, you want to, you want to uh, give them the, the burden of your heart and cast your care, as the verse said, your life to the Lord, okay? And so that's where we don't have all the answers for. That's where uh, this humility uh, comes in. And so, uh, you know, that, that's where way too many people in churches uh, have, uh, uh, through the years, uh, basically uh, got off on tangents and, and they've not listened. Preacher just not listening to the congregation. Pastor, I, I, I can't tell you what to do, but if I were you, uh, I listen to those men. We meet regularly. You know what? They give me guidance. The board get the executive board of this church, they give pastor guidance because you know what? This ain't a one man operation. The, you don't want no loose cannon out there just steering you in every which direction. What if I just come up once a week and said, hey, let's just knock out that whole, you see what I'm, let's just knock out all that bar off up there and let's put a drum set up there and some, and, and some wild uh, electric guitar back there. Hold it. It happens every week. That's right. And we're working so feverishly to get our choir back up there where we can hear the praises of God's people. Amen? Amen. Right. We have to submit to one another. But there is a, there is a line of demarcation. There is a place. The pastor can listen. But if it's going against the will of God, I cannot do it. Amen. And you shouldn't expect the pastor to want to go against the will of God. Amen. I can't go against I can't compromise the word of God. You shouldn't want me to compromise the Word of God. That's exactly. You know, we've had members in the past that wanted me to make these bins for the will of the people. I'm talking about to be a little more modern, to be a little bit more trendy, to get our, you know, what are these, what do they call these? Globes? Yeah, what do they call those? <laughs> strobe. To get our strobe lights and our purple uh, lights up in here and pink lights like the, the modern churches are doing. You know, there's been people here recently that that warned us to do that. Where'd that come from? Man, I don't know. Sure didn't come from the Lord of God. No, but sure didn't come from the Lord. That's right. And so listen, if we take this, we have to listen. But if we don't do exactly what you want us to do, don't think it personally. Don't take it personally. Why? Because it may not be what God wants us to do. Exactly right. Well, we did it over there, Pastor, in our the old church where we were over there. You ain't over there, honey. You over him. Why don't you get them glad rags of that clothes and humility and start just blending in real nice? Amen. 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 That wasn't too tough, was it? Swallowed real hard. Some of you had not breathed since I said it. Then thirdly and lastly, somebody help me. Glory. Amen. Amen. We got pizza waiting on us. Did you know we also have to humble ourselves? Look at verse 6. Now I know we, we read that word humble, but boy, you know the Bible says if we would commit our way in the Lord, and that word commit there means to roll down. Just get down and get low. He said he give us a desire to our heart, Psalm 37, 4, right? Here is the same meaning. We have to get low to, to get to get a, a promotion from God that God can use us and God can use us as a platform in our family. We have to get down. Oh, we have to lower ourselves. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Brother Chris, I want to learn that song. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And then there's a rope part of it. It's beautiful. Uh, about the only time I've ever heard a son in a church, Brother uh, Fisher, Doug Fisher, uh, there was a point in the church, and he came. Remember that Brother Walter? And sit right down in an Indian seat right in front of 7,000 people. I said, what is he doing? There's no way I could do that. So God let him to do that, not me. I have never heard a message quite like it. I know he had probably been fasting a long time. To be able to sit in an Indian position down in front of all these people, uh, delegates, 7,000 of us. And then to start singing this song. And boy, it was so beautiful. So wonderful. But you know, I think maybe the preacher that was called to preach, Brother Fisher, 
had some insight from the Lord because that church that he was preaching at would soon need exactly the message of being humble. Because they were they were going to be humbled. Amen. I had rather humble myself That's right. than to be shamed in front of the entire universe because I would not humble myself. That's right. And and so egotistical and so proud that the things just blew sky high. Well, the fisher saw it. Evidently, he saw that because it, he knew that was the message that God warned him to preach. And sometimes there's messages that God leads me to preach. I don't want to preach them. Right. I have no desire to. I'm going to preach the message I preached this morning on the love of God. Every service, every service. Believe me, I, that's the one. I cling to that love. My favorite verse, chapter of the Bible, is that chapter I read from this morning. Miss Crane's favorite chapter of the Bible is the one I preached from last Wednesday night, 1 John chapter 4. But you know what? I have to humble myself and I have to say, Lord. What does the people mean? And guess what? Thousands upon thousands of messages the Lord. That's not right. It's just a matter of fact. 37 years, you go to Catholic. The Lord stops me in his word every morning. God gives me a message. Amen. I go to scribbling it down. Amen. I can't write it fast enough. I go to type that. Lord, is that the one? You want to change it up, Lord? You let me know. But you see, that's the only way we can get promotion. It's not self-promotion. It's not promotion from the outside. Notice where the promotion, it says that he may exalt you in due season. And so, you know, we don't have the patience to wait on the Lord's promotion. But we want a self-promotion. That's not going to work. Oh, listen, it comes from staying in the service of the Lord. And, and you know, there's people that try to push and manipulate and, and uh, you know, they try their best to, uh, they, they call them pushers. And even in the Lord's work ministry, we have what we call cowboy preachers. Yeah. They drive instead of leave. They're, they're, they're pushing from behind. They're driving the sheep. When they ought to be out front setting the example. Amen. With this low and meek spirit. And don't get all out of rage and out of shape when things don't go your way. Hey, wake up, reality. 101. It don't go our way most of the time. That's right. And we just have to, we just have to go along for the ride, am I right? So in my generation, there's been a whole generation of leaders that taught us, you know, to push, to push, to push, and they push people out and over the edge. And they no longer want to come to church. Why? Because they had this syndrome, my church is bigger and better than your church. They push their people to the breaking point. Now look, I don't, it, it thrills me when I hear a church had a thousand in Sunday school. It thrills me. I just don't think we ought to publish all of that. I don't think that's why God wants us to have a thousand. I think if God wants us to have a thousand here, and he does. Amen. I, I don't think it's to be a spectacle huh? for filthy lucre or any other reason as we mentioned here. I think he wants us to be an example church. Like a pastor to be an example pastor. He wants our church to set the example with the lowliness of mind, with the meekness of spirit, to be clothed in this humility. You know, look, folks, the higher you go, the easier it is for you to fall. You realize that. That's right. And, and so uh, when God blesses you with a congregation like that, you need to be praying even the more so because it can be snatched out from under you in a heartbeat. And we need to pray for those leaders that God has blessed so that their churches are just growing by leaps and bounds. And boy, you know, the life of a ministry is the ebbs and the flows. It's much like our own personal life. There's way high mountaintops, and then there's way low valleys. Amen. But it's in the valleys that he restored our souls. I had one guy, one time they told me this. They said, Preacher, we don't mind if you trick us into doing something for the Lord. I said, excuse me, trick you? 
They said, yeah. Said, uh, uh, I've had other preachers that uh, they, they like for them to do this. Speaking of uh, different things that they want them to do, like giving or uh, soul money or uh, whatever it is that they uh, want them to do. And, I, you know, I just did, I didn't understand. But uh, I, I refuse to try to manipulate people. I don't have any tricks up my sleeve. I, you know, I just tell you what to do. You got to get it. I might do it with, sometimes with success and sometimes with some pizzazz and sometimes, you know, uh, with one of those kind of fire myths. Maybe or maybe not. But can I tell you, there's no manipulation here. I'm not coming to your house and say, hey, you got to do this. I have never come to any one of your homes and said, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. I'm just, I have to trust the Lord. Amen? Amen. I just have to trust the Lord. And, and so my answer is the answer you should have. My answer to this problem in life, look at it in the light and the perspective how God sees these things. We've got to get on his level. We've got to get on his, you know, his way. Of course, we'll never get there. But we have to understand, we have to have the mind of God, the Spirit of God. We have to understand, listen, if there's no humility, what does that say about us? It could be pride. Let me just say something else it could be if we fail in this matter of being a humble person. Could it be that we were hurt very early in life? Did you know there's people that were abused verbally? Emotionally, sexually, all, all manner of ways. And it affected them psychologically. And they're here, but they're not all there. These things have affected them so much that they're, it's just a good day for them to be here with us. You understand that? Folks, we can't expect people who've been hurt like that. That song that ministered to my heart, the wounds that Brother John was singing about a while ago, did you know there's people walking in and out of these churches every week that's been wounded and has a wounded heart? We need to put ourselves in their position. Don't expect those people to be at your level anytime soon. They may not ever be there. We just need to be thankful they're with us. Sit by. Invite them for some pizza. Amen. Amen. Humility. Well, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Just that word because it puts me out of conviction. But I don't know this. The Bible's always right. If it says we're to be clothed with humility, did you know? The Bible won't work unless we practice it. Here's that verse again. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. He will, what? Exalt you in due time. I think the key to our human life and our lifestyle, it, it's just innate. We all want an advancement. We all want an improvement. We all want an increase. But God knows we can't receive that increase until we're ready spiritually. That's right. We can't receive the pay raise until we are humbled. I had to go to our head. Did you know success often is the ruination? Of a person. That's right. Did you know that a job promotion, that's why it says to lay hands on no man suddenly. Why? Because the scripture says that it'd be full of pride. Basically, it will ruin that person to put more on, to put more, expect more out of a person if they're not ready. If they're not ready. Right. No one's going to push me to, to ordain. I had one guy one time. I refused to do it. I said, sir, I've worked with some people before by giving them an ordination of man. 
I have run some people doing that. Would you believe? I'm just sharing my heart. It's all right. Share my heart. Yeah, buddy. Go ahead. They went online and they got an ordination certificate off the internet. Folks, if you think that the way is the way up is by twisting fingers, prizing, eyebrowing, straightjacketing, forcing someone to do what you want them to do. Tonight when you get home, if you do not change your heart, you need to promise the Lord, I'm done. Because I'm going to hurt someone. I'm not going to be ready to witness to people. I'm called to the ministry, but I don't possess this humility that I need. Did you know you can do more danger than you could good if you're not clothed with humility? That's right. I hate to be so blunt. we got a lot of people here in the ministry in this church. I hope they go back. Not that I preach it, but the Lord gave it to them. I hope they go back and hear it over and over. We can hurt people. I know a lot of people that's hurt tonight because of self-promotion, egotism, pride. God hates it. I'm going to have to thank my love His sweet spirit. There's just no room for any of that other stuff. There's no room for self advancement. There's no room for big eyes and little use. They did not say here tonight, they did not say, submit yourselves one to another. Amen. What do you think about this, Brother Deacon? Brother Youth Pastor, what do you think? for prayer, shall we? Father, in the name of Christ, we come before you. We think about, Lord, how you said, I'm meek and lowly in heart, you shall find rest unto your soul. Lord, I feel so much peace here tonight and rest in our hearts. And Lord, I, to be quite honest, I need a message tonight. Lord, I don't think you learned this, Lord, the first few years that you're in the ministry or that you're a Christian. I don't think you learned this. I think it takes time to learn and experience. Most of us didn't learn it out there on the backside of the desert. It took time. Peter was a preacher and pastor over 100,000 people. He got thrown into it. The day of Pentecost, Lord, the church just mushroomed. And Lord, they had some widows and Greek women that, that they were upset, Lord, because they weren't uh, in the daily administration of the setting up of the tables and the feeding of those people who didn't have food to eat. The church was taking care of the needs. Lord, they feel like they were getting left out. They, they weren't getting the attention anymore. Lord, you gave deacons to go around to comfort people and help people and assist people and serve people and love people. And God, give us some people with a Lord of service spirit like that. Lord, to be clothed in humility. That's what a deacon has to be. A servant seen serving. Lord, just bring them our way. Clothed in this humility, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's stand.